Hello and welcome to this video. Um, today I'm going to show you how to find the inverse of a function. What's the inverse of a function? You mean doing the opposite? Uh, not exactly. But all you're saying is you're looking for a function where all the x values that you plotted on a graph of that function or that you all the things you call the input will emerge as the output if you used the inverse function and all the answers you are getting when you put in numbers here will end up becoming what you put in as the input and you'll be getting the input as the output is that doing the opposite sometimes not all the time but if that's how you understand it that's the inverse function so let's see how we can get the inverse function of this example this is a very simple straightforward one and we could also use these examples and find the inverse function it's the same process all the time if you can understand this so let's start with the very first one I'm gonna give you a list of steps you need to take to find the inverse of a function make sure you practice it several times so you master it I used to have a different way but I think this way is a good way too let's do it so the first step you need to take is to replace this function with the letter Y so step one I'm gonna write it here step one is to replace f of x with y so that's all you have to do because we don't want to keep writing f of x so just use y instead so we're going to say y equals x plus 1 now the second step is very important as soon as you replace it with y the next thing is you switch x and y i'm not saying move them i'm saying just switch anywhere you see x write y anywhere you see y write x that's it that's the second step step two switch x and y so if i do my switch right now instead of writing y here i'm going to write x instead of writing x i'm going to write y that's the second step the third step now that you've done this is just to isolate y make y the subject of the formula and that's your answer you see it doesn't take long it doesn't take so much work firstly replace f of x with y because we don't want to keep writing this it's just cumbersome to do that okay then when you have y and x only in your equation switch their positions wherever you see x switch it to y wherever you see y switch it to x that's what we just did the last thing is make y the subject of the formula you want this to be standing alone so if this is standing alone you might as well just move this one to this side or subtract one from both sides so that way you're gonna have x minus one equals y okay which implies is the same thing as saying y equals x minus one this is what we're used to this is your inverse function but it's just that you still have y we don't want y because there was no y at the beginning and we have the inverse function so the inverse function now the notation for inverse function is this so just use this to replace this so you have the inverse function of x is equal to x minus 1 this is your inverse function so the inverse function of f of x equals x plus 1 is actually x minus 1 you got that <laughs> okay now let's take another example I'm not going to use these examples yet let's take another example that might look too simple for you but will help you understand what we're talking about let's do this so this is another example you have f of x is equal to x find the inverse function um, 
Okay, let's do that. So remember step one is replace f of x with y. So we're gonna rewrite this as y equals x. The next thing is wherever you see x, write it as y. Okay, and wherever you see y, write as x. So I'm gonna switch this to x and I'm gonna switch this to y. The next step is to isolate y or make y the subject of the formula. Well, y is already the subject of the formula, which means we're done. Just make sure y is on the left to make it look beautiful, okay? So this is it. Once y is isolated, you have answered the question. Remember that. Once y is isolated correctly, you have answered the question. So your answer here simply means y equals x. And since you've got reached to the end of it, you just go back here and replace y with this notation. So you have the inverse function will be equal to x. As you can see, the inverse of f of x equals x is itself. Okay, let's take another example. So our next example is f of x is equal to one over x plus two. So I'm just gonna take the four steps that I usually take. First step is replace f of x with y. So I have y equals one over x plus two. The next step is switch the positions. I'm not saying solve anything, just Wherever you see y, write x. Wherever you see x, write y. Don't change anything. Now we're trying to isolate y. Okay? We're trying to isolate y. Well, ideally, what most people will do is to do what you call cross multiplication. Okay? Um, or you just multiply each term by the highest common denominator, which is still y plus 2. So we're going to multiply x by y plus 2 and it's going to be 1 over y plus 2 times y plus 2 okay so what you have here will be xy plus 2x equals these two will cancel out what you have left is 1 now um, we just we're just trying to isolate y there's only y on this side well let's move the 2x to that side so you have xy equals 1 minus 2x. So if you want to make y the subject, you divide both sides by x. So y will be equal to 1 minus 2x divided by x. You have isolated y. And that's it. So your final answer, the inverse function of x is equal to 1 minus 2x over x. Perfectly done. Perfect. Let's move on to the next one. Next question will be f of x equals 1 over x. Let's just go through it. I'm assuming now you have mastered the steps, okay? So y equals 1 over x. My next step, I'm going to replace y with x and x with y, 1 over y. The next thing I'm going to do is try to isolate y, make sure y is standing alone. And what I'm going to do is multiply each term by y. So this, I'm going to end up with xy equals 1. Because if I multiply this by y, the y is going to cancel out. So now y is going to be 1 over x. So the inverse function of x is of 1 over x is 1 over x itself. So some people say it has no inverse. And some people say it is the inverse of itself. Well, if the inverse is the same as the original, it looks like nothing changes. So it has no inverse. Well, depends on how you want to express it. But that's the answer we get. Okay, so that's that for this. So I have checked this off. I've checked this off. I have two more to show you how to find the inverse. But don't forget the same rules apply. The first thing is replace this with y, then where you're supposed to have y, switch it, and then switch it to x and x to y, and isolate y. Once you isolate y, you're done with your work. 
Okay, let's go to the last two questions. So, this question, number two, says f of x is 2 plus the square root of x minus 2. Okay, now some of these functions are not, don't have um, infinite domains. There's some restrictions at the end of it, but that's when you work with them. But for the sake of calculation, we just want to find what this will be. So, first step, replace this. y will be equal to 2 plus square root of x minus 2. Now I'm going to change this to x and change this to y. Okay, this is going to be 2 plus square root of y minus 2. Okay, I'm going to get this over to this side, x minus 2 equals the square root of y minus 2. Remember, I'm trying to isolate y. Okay, so um, what's left next? To get this out, I have to square both sides. So x minus 2 squared will be equal to um, the square root of y minus 2 squared. So this gives me just y minus 2, and that's x minus 2 squared. So at this point, there's only one thing left. Get rid of this negative 2. Okay, so I'm going to have x minus 2 squared plus 2 equals y. I have isolated y, and this is the inverse of my function. Well, you may go ahead and expand this and make it simpler, but I'm just going to stop there. So I have my inverse function, okay, will be equal to x minus 2 squared plus 2. Let's go to f of x is x cubed plus 1, and that will be our final uh, question for today. f of x will be x cubed plus 1. Do the replacement, x cubed plus 1. Now switch the x and the y by just writing x here and writing y here. y cubed equals, sorry, plus 1. Plus 1. Okay, let's try and isolate this. That's going to be x minus 1 equals y cubed. So let me just bring this to this side. So y cubed equals x minus 1. And y will be the cube root. I have to take the cube root of both sides. So that will be the cube root of both sides. That will be x minus 1. There's nothing else you need to do. You just have to, you found your answer. Okay? And that's going to be the cube root of x minus 1. You have found the inverse function. There is nothing hidden. There is no secret. If you have to do some complex work to find the inverse function, it's more likely that it has no inverse. You're just overworking yourself. Inverse functions are very um, straightforward to find. All you have to do is follow these steps. Remember the steps once again. The first thing to do is replace the function notation with the letter y. Once you've gotten that, the next thing to do is wherever you see y, write x. Wherever you see x, write y. And the last and final step, the penultimate step, is to isolate y. That might take you a number of steps, depending on how complex the original um, function was. And when you get to this final point where the y is standing alone, and there is no y anywhere here, you have found your answer. Just replace the y again with what you were supposed to find. Okay? Find the inverse function. Okay? So, replace this with this. And you are good. Thank you for watching this video. I'll see you in the next video. Until then, don't stop learning. Because those who stop learning have stopped living.